Pelvic Posse, and welcome to the Empower Your Pelvis podcast. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Hello. I'm Amanda Fisher, host of the Empower Your Pelvis podcast. We are live from the Kansas City location. If you have been following us along on social media, we currently have a clinic on the Missouri side of Kansas City, and this is our second location for Empower Your Pelvis opening up on the Kansas location. So I am doing this podcast from the Overland Park, Kansas location. And today I wanted to check in with y'all because we've talked a lot about fertility recently. We've talked a lot about pregnancy and postpartum. What I want y'all to realize is patients that come in the clinic are not just prenatal and postpartum. We're treating a wide range of patient population here, male, female, pelvises of every age. And one patient in particular this week that came in, it reminded me why I wanted to get into this field. So I, if you know my backstory or not, I actually got into physical therapy because of sports medicine side of things. I did the athletic training on the sidelines for the Mizzou football team when I was at Mizzou during my undergrad. And I loved the athletic side. I played sports all throughout my life, volleyball, basketball, I ran track, and I had a lot of injuries, which led me into physical therapy. And then going into physical therapy grad school, that was my dream, sports med all the way. Well, then I developed some pelvic floor issues myself. I started having pain with sex. I started peeing my pants while running and training for the Kansas City Half Marathon and a few other half marathons. I actually about a few, we had six in one year, which also developed into some injuries and some stress fractures. And, you know, that's when it kind of sparked my interest of hearing and really learning about pelvic health. So long story short, had a couple kids, had a few more pelvic floor issues that happened during that time because we're messing with tissue. And then now patients that are coming in and they're, oh, I just love them so much. They're not like our prenatal postpartum population. These are moms that are coming in and finding us because they're peeing their pants, maybe getting back into fitness gyms. Or honestly, this one patient, she just melts my soul because I can relate so much. I used to coach um, volleyball and basketball teams. And this mom in particular has girls and is coaching her girls volleyball and basketball teams. And she's peeing her pants while coaching the girls, right? So like, if you think shooting a basketball, she's jumping up and teaching them to rebound. She's reaching for that ball. If you guys are watching on YouTube, you can see me reaching up for that when she's doing that and landing after getting the ball. And she's like a collegiate athlete or has been in the past. She's not now she's late thirties, early forties. And she's landing from rebounding from getting that basketball at her daughter's basketball practice and peeing her pants. Or she's showing them a volleyball drill where she's going up and spiking it at the net, coming down, peeing her pants, doing line drills, running mountains with these girls, sprints, if you played sports, line drills, okay? And when she's going down, touching the line and coming back, we're peeing our pants. So We start in the clinic where we're looking at the pelvic floor and we do an internal exam. So we did this with this patient, for instance. So we get, we go through the medical history. We have her laid down on her back on the table. It's a similar to a gynecological exam, only we are assessing the muscle tissue. So we do an internal exam, one gloved finger. We check out layer one, layer two, layer three, left side, right side, have her contract, have her relax, see how long she can hold it yada, 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 have her bear down, see if we see any tissue that may look like prolapsed tissue or weakened pelvic floor tissue. But then I like to also assess our patients in sitting. I also like to assess them in standing. And for her in particular, she is jumping and landing and peeing her pants. So of course, we went through checking her pelvic floor muscles out on the table, having her sit, I'm still internal, okay, go ahead and move or sit. I want to feel you contract, relax, hold endurance, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to have you move from sit to stand. So I'm still internal. She's moving from sit to stand. What am I feeling? I actually feel pressure. She's bearing down through those muscle tissues, meaning the tissues are not closing off to kink the fire hose. She's actually pushing pressure down and opening it up, causing pressure to come out towards that urethral opening. So we've got to retrain her how to move from sit to stand. Then it's standing. I'm still internal doing a vaginal assessment of the pelvic floor muscles and I have her in standing. 
lift up a couple weights, uh, move. I then have her jump, keeping her toes on the ground. So we're just lifting her heels and coming back down really softly, coaching her through how to do it properly and feeling that muscle tissue. And then of course, having her jump up and down on the ground, still internal vaginally assessing the muscle tissue. So we got an idea of what her muscles were doing. We had her change, get dressed. We move out into the gym and this is the fun stuff that like takes me back into high school days. It's now coming up with drills and exercises to help prep her tissue. And that's something that we're doing in our clinic day to day, whether like say this patient in particular, her kids are like seven and nine. Okay. But say this was a mom who just had a baby. We're doing the same exact activity work in the room, assessing those pelvic floor muscles, and then handing her the weights of maybe her toddler, of how heavy her toddler would be when she's moving them from, from out of the bathtub or into their crib. Same thing with the baby. How heavy is the baby? How heavy is the baby in the car seat? Okay, here's some weight. Let's move from sit to stand with that kind of weight. This patient in particular, she's not lifting her kids. Her kids are seven or nine, but she's doing the activities with them during their athletic events. So we are going out into the gym and looking at, oh, and I forgot to, well, anyways, so we're going out to the gym and looking at weight and looking at form with five movements that I really think that we all do, whether we have kids or not, we're all athletes. Um, looking at how that pelvic floor, pelvic floor is moving with squatting, hinging, pushing, pulling, and carrying objects. So we do that in the gym. One thing I forgot to mention, she's also peeing her pants, not only with rebounding basketballs, spiking a volleyball, but also when she lifts her 50 pound golden doodle from the ground in their garage up into the back of their Suburban or in the back of their SUV. So we worked on that activity in the gym as well at our clinic and watching the form and not only form, but the biggest thing we took away, whether we had weight or we're just doing the motion is she is a breath holder and everything with the pelvic floor starts with the breath. We have to get that thoracic movement. We have to get that rib mobility happening and then exhaling to make that happen. Cause if things aren't happening up here in the rib cavity, opening up and closing, that can really hinder what's happening in the pelvic floor and lower abdomen. Okay. So I wanted to share this story and we did, we did do activities. Oh, and another one too. She was peeing her pants while jumping on the trampoline because they have a trampoline at her house. So we, it's, we have a trampoline in the clinic. We assess that with her too. We modified everything first with breath for her and then went through weights. We actually had her lifting 50 pounds, which would have been her golden doodle from the ground up to the height of the back of an SUV and back down again with her breath breathing correctly and no pain and had her jumping in the clinic, not pain. And so there are activities. This is all on, this is her third visit that we are adding and modifying all of this in because she wasn't a patient that we had to really start at ground zero with. We just have to build up some endurance and stamina with her. And it comes down to even like the little nitty gritty side of it. Like her when she's hinging, so really letting those hips go back to pick something up off the ground where we're not rounding her back, she will fatigue with rounding her back out first. So we're building up strength and stamina there. But there's a lot of fun activities that she's doing at home to build up strength. And then our ultimate goal for her, her big goal is to not pee her pants with rebounding the basketball, spiking the volleyball, lifting her dog, and then jumping on the trampoline. So I'm really excited to see where this progresses, but I wanted to share that story with y'all because I know that we so often talk pregnancy and postpartum and that's not, it is a big population that we see here, but another big one is our moms that are further out and then our women that are like premenopausal, postmenopausal as well. So keep that in mind. We do see young kids too, that are maybe having giggle incontinence. So they're sleeping at a sleepover or at their athletic not event uh, practice and they're giggling with their friends and they may pee their pants. So we see a wide range, but this is just an example today of one that we do see how we might treat her or analyze her situation. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. If you would like to do an online program with us, you're more than welcome to. We have our bladder bladder. What's the matter series going on on our public posse membership, which is $25 a month right now, or you can do a year for $250 where I'm on there live with exercises three times a week, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. And then we have series every couple of weeks, like this one for bladder health. We're right now, I think on week five. So we've gone through the series of really building up exercises down there and the pelvic floor to help decrease bladder leakage. 
and improve pelvic floor muscle strength and stability. So patients are going through those patients, clients are going through those online, virtually in our group. We get in there and chat a lot this month too. We're doing a goal setting, like what are your goals for public health in 2023? How can we help you meet those goals? So that's another event or series that we're hosting on our community platform. If this is something you're interested in, please hit the link below. And as always, please like and subscribe to the show. Please share with your friends and let me know if you have any questions. We're more than happy to do a series or a podcast or in whatever you would like. Peace out, everybody. Thank you for joining in on the Empower Your Pelvis podcast. And until next time, happy pelvis health down there. Okay, keep it healthy. Bye, guys. Hey, Pelvic Posse. I want to thank you so much for joining into this week's episode of the Empower Your Pelvis podcast. Can I ask you a couple of favors, please? Number one, can you like and subscribe to this podcast so that you can continue to empower your pelvis forever so that you will never miss out? Number two, can you leave us a rating and a review telling them how amazing we are and everything that you have learned about your pelvic health? And then number three, If you haven't seen the video version of this podcast, you can go over to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash empower your pelvis for all your visual learners out there. We have all types of great visuals in there for you to not only listen to, but to also watch. Thank you so much again, and make sure to give your pelvis some love. Until next time, peace out pelvic posse.